Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and consider leaving a like. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do multi-channel ADC with direct memory access on an STM32 microcontroller. My name is Ali and you're watching Circuit Gator HQ. To start coding, open up STM32 Cube IDE and click on create a new STM32 project. Then go to board selector and type in the part number of the microcontroller that you're using. Then click on the microcontroller and then click on next. Then for the project name, you can just call it ADC and then click on finish and then click on yes. We're going to initialize everything from scratch. So click here where it says pin out and then click on clear all pin out. Then go to system core and then under system, under debug, select the serial wire. Then go to RCC and then for the high speed clock, select the crystal ceramic resonator. Then you can just go to the clock configuration and ensure that your microcontroller is running at its maximum frequency. And go back to pin out and then under analog click on the adc channel that we're going to use so in this video we're basically going to be reading two analog values from two potentiometers so we're going to use adc one and then i'm going to select channel zero and channel one then we see that our adc pin for channel zero is pa0 and then our adc pin for channel one is going to be pa1 so now what we need to do is that under parameter settings need to make sure that continuous conversion mode is enabled and then scroll down a bit and then for the number of conversions we need to change this number to two since we'll be reading two adc values and then expand where it says rank one and then make sure that it's channel one here and then you can set the sampling time to suit the type of project that you're working on i'm just going to select 480 cycles and then expand the rank two and then change this one to channel one and then you can just select the same number of cycles for the sampling time then what we need to do to enable direct memory access is go to dma settings and then add a new dma request and then select the adc channel that we're using and then here under dma request settings change the mode to secular so that our microcontroller keeps reading new dma values and then for the priority, we can just set the priority to high. And then the data width, we need to set it to a word. Click here where it says system view, click on NVIC, and then click on the ADC1 global interrupt. And then here at the preemption priority, just click on the drop down and set it to a value of one. And then go back to the ADC parameter settings. And then here it says DMA continuous request. We need to change this to enabled so that we can see our values uh, changing in real time without having to press the reset button every time you want to see a new value. And then when we're done capturing our ADC values, we are going to transmit them to a serial terminal app via user 2 so that we can be able to see our values changing in real time. So go to connectivity and then under user 2, click on asynchronous for the mode. We're not going to change any of these parameters, but one thing you should do is take note of the baud rate, which is going to be 115200 bits per second. When you're done, click on Ctrl and S to save the project and then click on Yes to generate the new code. On the main C file, we need to add two libraries. So here where it says user code begin include, we're going to say hashtag include and we're going to add the stdio.h header file. And then we're going to say hashtag include again and then we're going to add the string.h header file then we can scroll down to where it says user code begin pv to initialize our private variables since we're going to be reading two values from two potentiometers i'm going to create two variables to store our adc values i'm going to say u int 16 underscore t and then i'm going to call the first variable pot one and then I'm just going to copy this and then paste it below. Then I'm going to call the second variable port two. The reason I'm creating 16 bit variables is because our ADC is a 12 bit ADC. So we need to create a variable that is large enough to contain all of that information. And then I'm going to create a third variable that is going to contain the raw ADC values before we separate them into port one and port two. So I'm going to say you int 32 underscore t and then i'm going to call this variable read value and then i'm going to give it a size of two bytes when we're done reading the adc values we need to transmit them via ur so that we can see them 
so i'm going to create a character buffer and then i'm going to give it a size of 50 byte then when that is done we can just scroll down to the main function and then here where it says user code begin to we're going to start our adc in direct memory access mode so i'm just going to say hal underscore adc underscore start and then hold on control and space photo completion and then we see we have a couple of options when it comes to how we can start our adc so double click on this one that says dma and then select adc one and then we're going to store our values inside our red value variable but then we need to pass this variable as a 32 bit so i'm going to say open bracket u in 32 underscore t and then i'm going to point to our variable and then for the length we're just going to say two then you need to scroll down to the main while loop and then here under user code begin three we're going to write the logic to get our combined adc values and then separate them into the first half for our first potentiometer and the second half into our second potentiometer i'm going to create the for loop by saying for and then i'm going to create a new variable u int 8 underscore t and i'm going to call the variable i and then i'm going to equate it to a value of zero and then i'm going to say while i is less than h adc1 dot init dot number of conversion and then i'm going to increment this new variable and i'm going to say pot one is equals to the first 16 bits of the read value variable which is the variable containing the raw adc values and then i'm going to read from the first index and then i'm going to copy this line of code put it here and then say for part two and then read from the second index then when this is done we need to prepare our data for serial transmission so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to take this data that we just read and then i'm going to put it inside of the character buffer that we created so that we can transmit it via uart so i'm going to say sn printf buffer comma the size of the buffer that we created then i'm going to add some text so that we can see which values belong to which potential meter I'm going to copy this paste it here and then change this to two say backward slash r and then backward slash n so that we start printing on a new line then after this we need to put in the corresponding values so i'm going to say port one comma port two then i'm going to say hal underscore uart underscore transmit and then i'm going to double click on uart two and then the data that we are going to be transmitting is the data stored inside of the buffer variable but then we need to pass this data as an integer so i'm going to say u in 8 underscore t and then i'm going to point to our buffer variable and then when it comes to the size i'm just going to say size of our buffer variable and then for the timeout i'm going to say hal underscore maximum delay and then i'm going to add a small 500 millisecond delay so that we don't overload our serial terminal app then i'm going to build our project to see if there are any errors then we see that we have a couple of errors but it shouldn't be too hard to fix the errors need to add another full stop here then i'm just gonna fix the statement and then we can build again great when it says finish building with zero errors and zero warnings we can then now connect our microcontroller to our pc to upload the code the circuit connections for this tutorial are very easy since we're using potentiometers they have three terminals just connect the middle terminal of the first potentiometer to pin a0 on your microcontroller and the middle terminal of the second potentiometer to pin a1 of your microcontroller and then connect the second terminals of the two potentiometers to a 5 volt pin on your microcontroller and the last terminals to ground then click on this green play button to upload our microcontroller go to the debugger select st link click on scan click on apply and then click on ok when the code has been uploaded we need to open the serial terminal app i'm going to be using party for this video and then we need to make sure that our speed matches the baud rate of our microcontroller and the com port as well so for the speed 
you just need to make sure that the speed in your serial terminal app matches this baud rate value that we have here and then for our com pod you can just go to the device manager and then under pods you should see where it says st micro electronics and then we see that for my system it's connected to com 10 so i'm just going to change this to 10 and then to make the text a little bit bigger i'm just going to change it to a font size 26 and then click on ok and then click on open when the serial terminal app is open we can see that our microcontroller is able to successfully read the analog values for port 1 and the analog values for port 2 then when i adjust the wiper on the potentiometers from left to right we can see the adc values under port 2 changing as i increase and i decrease the values and then we can see that the same thing applies to potentiometer 1 when I increase the values, we're able to see the values increase in the serial terminal app. And then when I decrease the values, we're able to see them decrease as well. This means that our code is successfully reading all the ADC values in real time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or any feedback, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you'd like to help the channel grow so that I can make more videos like this, please consider checking out the PayPal donations link in the description below. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next upload.